Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and this is my friend Alan Falk. Uh, and we this is the, uh, the, the first episode of a series that we're going to be calling Giving Smart, uh, which I broadly define as giving, that is giving to a charitable organization, uh, in such a way that some of the money that you're giving is actually being matched um, by the IRS or by the Department of Revenue, because you're giving money that otherwise was going to be going to them. So Al and I have talked about this because um, while many of you know my specialty here has been elder law, Alan's is tax, and he knows all about trying to not give money to the Department of Revenue or to the Internal Revenue Service. So uh, we're doing this series together, and we're going to be talking about a variety of issues. Um, the first one, we're going to, we're going to talk specifically today about, about qualified charitable distributions, which we'll get into. But first, I want you to give us get a sense of where we're going to be going. And so here's a slide that kind of outlines what we're going to be doing. So as we, I indicate in the slide, the first topic, which is today's topic, is about charitable giving, specifically about qualified charitable deductions, things that you probably have not heard of, nor have most of your neighbors, which is one of the reasons why we're talking about this. So before we start, though, we really want to introduce you to the characters that we're going to talk about consistently. And because I've done elder law for years and kind of have developed uh, my good friends, Frank and Mary, whom many of you have heard of, Frank and Mary, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. We're going to use them as our example, Frank and Mary and Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Uh, and, and we're going to, and Alan's going to talk to you a little bit about their current situation. Uh, and he's illustrating this in this slide number two. All right, thank you, Arthur. So we have, for the purpose of this presentation, come up with some assumptions as far as what Frank and Mary's income looks like. Um, in regard to their income, for the purpose of this illustration, we are saying that they have approximately $70,000 of taxable income. That's gonna be interest, dividends, taxable social security, maybe some pensions and capital gains. Um, also, as you'll see in, in the slide, we're assuming that their required minimum distribution or their RMD is $30,000. Um, that's also going to be relevant, particularly for this presentation, where we're talking about qualified charitable distributions. Um, as far as itemized deductions, what can they deduct from their taxes? Uh, we've, again, made some assumptions, as you'll see in the slide. We're assuming that their medical expenses uh, out of pocket for the year were about $10,000. We're also going to be assuming that their real estate taxes are $9,000, their income taxes that they're paying to the state uh, are about $3,500, and they typically on an, on an annual basis make about $5,000 of charitable contributions uh, to various uh, charities that are important to them. So now that you have a sense of who Frank and Mary are and what their kind of basic financial situation is, at least for tax purposes, I've asked Alan to answer the, uh, the classic question that comes up every once in a while when folks call and say, well, you know, I just got called by my favorite charity and they said, you know, we'd really appreciate if you could do a, 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 a contribution this year, which you've always made. And don't forget that contribution is tax deductible. Right. And my clients say, well, will call me and say, so that's that's correct, isn't it? And the answer to that is, Alan, maybe. Well, so, and I bet that's a surprise to many of you. So maybe, and why is that a maybe? So I think there's there's two distinctions we have to make here. Something that is tax deductible that you can deduct, um, but also something that you receive a tax benefit for. So often, because of the, the recent, relatively recent increase in the standard deduction, a lot of taxpayers, although they can technically deduct a charitable contribution, aren't getting any tax benefit for it because they don't exceed the standard deduction. And now, can you kind of talk about that in, you know, in specifics using the example that you gave me about what, what Frank and Mary's actual financial situation is? And by the way, 
because Alan does these things in his head, but many of us can't. So slide three uh, shows you um, what Alan means when he says, well, yeah, it's tax deductible, but, you know, kind of only maybe. And in this case, maybe just no. Uh, Alan, right. So let's let's walk through this example. And this is the example in slide two. Remember, again, I said there was ten thousand dollars of medical expenses. Well, their adjusted gross income, um, you lose the first seven and a half percent of your itemized deductions, what we refer to as the haircut. So if they're adjusted, that's, that's not a tax term. That's a kind of a. <laughs> it's a well, well actually, it, it, maybe it is a tax it, no, it's term. Not, Everybody it's, uses it. It's right? slang, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a slang. So. There's a haircut. So if we assume that their adjusted gross income between their RMDs, which we're going to discuss, as well as their other income is about $100,000, they're going to lose the first $7,500 or 7.5% or of that $100,000. So their ability to deduct their medical expenses is limited to $2,500. Okay, that's, that's step one. Step two is we look at the next group of deductions that they have, which are... Uh, the next group is the taxes, and typically for most of us, it's real estate taxes, it's going to be income taxes, maybe some personal property taxes on your automobiles. Um, so in the example here, we have 9000 of real estate taxes, $3,500 of income taxes. However, however, there is now a limitation on how much you can deduct, which is referred to as the SALT limitation, state and local tax deduction. That limitation is $10,000. So although we've actually paid $12,500 out of our pocket, we can only deduct $10,000, okay? So now, if, we, if we're keeping tabs, we've got $2,500 of medical expenses that we could actually deduct. We've got uh, $10,000 of taxes that we can deduct. And then, in our example, we said, well, let's contribute $5,000 to charity. So now we have a total... Uh, we have a total available deductions when we're itemizing of $17,500. Which sounds like a lot of money. Well, and it is. Right. However, for Frank and Mary, because they are over 65, their standard deduction is $32,300 in 2024, which means they have two options. Option one is to take the lower itemized deductions or take the standard. Now, most people are going to take the standard deduction. Um, and having done this type of work for a quite some time, I have found that more and more people are taking the standard deduction versus itemizing just because of the state and local limitation, the SALT limitation we talked about, um, as well as the medical deductions. And I can tell you from dealing, having dealt with a lot of seniors, and I actually had to do the math recently because they asked me, or I've been now here at Myrick O'Connell for about 15 years, they said, so how many clients have you have you brought in during that time? Well, actually, it's about 23 or 2,400 clients. So I've seen a ton of seniors. And the notion of my seniors, of the seniors that, that work with me, right, having, for example, a, a, a medical expenses that would, that would actually cause them, uh, together with their other expenses, to exceed that total standard deduction of over $30,000, no, who does that, right? Same thing with taxes. You just never get there, right? The other big deduction, which would be a big deduction, if you had one, would be the mortgage. But my clients don't have mortgages. A handful of them do, right? But most of them you don't have mortgages anymore. So that deduction is now gone. So the, 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 the no, unless you have an unbelievably big a set of medical expenses, right? That's the one thing that can cause you to be kind of hitting these numbers, right? You're just never going to see a, a set of, of total deductions that is going to equal your standard deduction, which means as a practical matter, the value of that, that charitable deduction of $5,000 is zero. Is zero right? So if we go back to the example, Arthur, you'll see that although Frank and Mary made a $5,000 charitable contribution, which they could deduct, they're not actually getting any benefit of it because they're going to use the standard deduction of 32,300. So whether or not they made the, the charitable contribution in this case would not actually impact their tax liability. And that's the bad news. But now let us tell you a little bit about the good news. So 
fairly recently, and Alan knows when this happened, right? Um, there, the, a, a, a new tax benefit arose uh, at the federal level uh, called the Qualified Charitable Distribution, which Alan's going to talk about now for a little, for a few minutes, because if your ta- if your charity you know came to you and said, oh, we could really use that deduction. You may want to come back and tell them, well, you know, maybe we could do something through a qualified charitable distribution and watch their jaws drop because most of them don't aren't aware of this either. So, Alan, how does this work? All right. So how this works is for taxpayers who are over 70 and a half and have retirement accounts, typically IRAs. Um, there's once you hit actually 73 now, you're required to take a what's called an RMD or required minimum distribution. And all you seniors know that name, RMD, the money that you really don't want, right? Because you know that when you get it, you're going to have to pay tax on it before you get it, right? That's right. So I'll get calls from, from clients saying, how can I reduce my tax liability? And come to find out, you know, they are charitably inclined. So what we'll talk about is making these these qualified charitable distributions directly from their IRA. So in 2024, a taxpayer can contribute up to $105,000 um, of their IRA to a qualified charity. And, and Alan, by the way, once again, this 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 change happened fairly recently, right? This this change in the, very my recollection is it's just like within the last few years. It, yeah, it's relatively recent within the last few years, but it's 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 been somewhat slow, I think, to catch on. Um, right. You know, talking to charities, they're getting more and more contributions year end, but um, it's it's starting to pick up steam, at least in, right. at least from what I'm seeing out there. Um, so the question becomes, if you have to take this distribution out and you're going to pay tax on it, but then you're going to donate it or a portion of it to charity, is there a better way, a more tax efficient way to make it happen? And as you can see, if we go back to slide two, although they were taking, a, uh, they were making a $5,000 charitable contribution deduction, they weren't getting the tax benefit. So what do we do? Ah, first we change to slide three, and we're gonna, sh- because slide three is gonna help you understand what Alan's about to tell you. Okay. So we're going to go to slide three. So slide three is, is really sort of a with and without, if you will. And we'll walk through how a, a qualified charitable uh, contribution distribution works. In my example, remember, we've got $70,000 of taxable income and we've got an RMD, required minimum distribution of 30,000. So total taxable income of $100,000. So you, so their total income without counting the, the amount that they were going to have to take for the RMD was 70,000, but their RMD was $30,000, right? Correct. So if you look at column one in our slide, you'll see that total adjusted gross income is $100,000. The standard deduction is 32300 Again, remember, they didn't get the benefit of the $5,000 charitable contribution because they didn't hit the, the 32300 standard deduction. So their taxable income becomes 67700 I know a lot of numbers. And their, their total federal income tax is $12,110 based on 2024 rates. Now, is there a better way to do it? And the answer is yes. So instead of them taking the $30,000 RMD and then paying over $5,000 to a charity, of which they get no tax benefit for, they say to their financial advisor or the custodian or whoever has their IRA, say, look, it, pay me $25,000 and make a direct distribution of $5,000 to a qualified charity. We'll touch base a little bit what the qualified charity is. So now if we look at column two, the adjusted gross income is $95,000. Because the 5,000 went to the charity. Because the 5,000 went to the charity, you don't get it as a charitable contribution deduction, which you weren't getting the benefit for it anyway, but you're also not reporting it as taxable income. So your taxable income drops by the $5,000. You take the same $32,300 standard deduction, again, with or without the charitable contribution, it didn't make a difference because you didn't hit that that level, the 32,000. Um, so then now we calculate our taxable income and it's eleven thousand and ten dollars for tax savings of eleven hundred dollars. Or so, in other words, out of the five thousand dollars that you that you were giving to that charity, actually eleven hundred of those dollars uh, was being paid by the Internal Revenue Service. And I think 
that that the, at the state level something similar happens, doesn't it? Well, something now keep in mind you lose the charitable contribution deduction. So for Massachusetts, for years and years we never were able to take charitable contributions. Beginning last year, we can. Um, however, so in in some ways at Massachusetts, it's almost a wash from a from a tax perspective because although we don't have to report the income, we also don't get the deduction. So at least the way Massachusetts is, is structured from a tax perspective, it's a wash. Other states are going to treat it differently, so there may be some t- state tax benefit as well. The point being is, in this case here, you know you're going to save at least $1,100 in taxes. Right. Or th- thought of another way, right? You're making about a $4,000 contribution, and the IRS is making about a $1,000 contribution, right? So you are, you are um, you're saving that money. And, and as far as the charity is concerned, they're getting the same dollar. They're getting they're getting all right. five thousand of your dollars, right? Correct. So, Alan, I know there are some issues about what, you know when these thing when these transfers have to be made and other stuff. Can you just kind of talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, a couple of things to keep in mind. One is the contribution needs to be made by the end of the year. Um, number two, it needs to be made to a qualified public charity. This is important. Um, a qualified public charity is a five hundred one c three that is not a donor advised fund that is not a private foundation, um, that is not a supporting organization. But most, most of the charities that we're familiar with are publicly traded, uh, I'm sorry, are publicly supported and will qualify uh, as a 501c3. However, before you make this uh, contribution, you should check with them to make sure that they are qualified to receive a distribution from an IRA account. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is you have to be at least 70 and a half to make this. So, you know, if you're if you're 69 years old, you you can't take a qualified distribution. The good news is you also don't have to take an RMD. So again, there is a little bit of a, of a wash in that case here, um, and that's pretty much the, the kind of the nuts and the bolts of what a qualified distribution is. And and just I just wanted to mention one other thing. Once again, from the perspective of making this work, the money has to be out of your IRA and in the hands of the charity by December 31st. If you, you can't be writing this check, if, the, if, the, if, you, if you get the money from your IRA and then you turn around and write a check to the charity, this doesn't work. The money right. has to come from the entity that is holding your IRA money in order for this to work. Correct. So yeah. don't ask like on December 25th, don't call your, you know, your, your, your guy and say, oh, well, I really want you to do this by the end of the year. He won't. You got to get this done way before that. And keep in mind, Arthur, you know what your qualified distribution, your, your RMD is by January 1st of the year. So, you know, we're, we're sitting here, you know, midway through 2024. We knew about six months ago what our RMD was supposed to be. Was going to be for this year. Yeah. Right. So there's no reason, you know, you can't reach out to the financial institution sooner rather than later instead of waiting until December 25th because, Arthur, as Arthur said, it's probably not going to happen. So... This is a lot of information, but it's a, it's a really important topic. We'll be talking about several other topics over the course of the next few weeks, or actually about, over about the next month and a half. If you have any questions, um, you can call either one of us. Our information is going to be on the sl- on this slide, right? Uh, and we'd be happy to talk to you about any of these issues. But this is an important issue, and we'll look forward to, see- to seeing you on the next installment of Giving Smart.